there's actually two two things I think. Number one, yes, I share your concern with their ability to to completely and neutralize our power grid. I think it speaks to the archaic nature with which our power grid still exists uh, on. Um, and I and I would say that uh, you know take uh, take. And the, the, you know, nuclear warfare, I mean, we're the only country who's actually done it, Yeah. you know, and, and I'm not saying that, that that was even necessarily the right call, but if you look at, you know, okay, if we don't do it and, and you know, we're going to spend the next nine years in, in Japan and we're going to lose 2 million fucking American soldiers, yeah. you know, is that the lesser of two evils? Probably. Um, you know, those are, are debates that you can have and, and you can see every side till you're blue in the face, but uh, to me, that that's the one of the the core principles and problems that our government and society have is is uh, you know sending sending troops and and then trying to micromanage them. I mean, to me, it's like you're an Eagles fan, right? It's like mm-hmm. having uh, having the the Eagles offense being voted on by the fucking by the mm. audience, you know, or, or by the spectators, you know. And yeah. it's like it just doesn't work that way, you know. And uh, you you've got to trust that that they're going to do the right fucking job, and you're going to go watch them. Uh, but you're not calling the fucking plays, you know, so that, that's just how it has to be. Well, we also live in the mass media age now, which is even extending back to previous eras where we are Monday morning quarterbacking everything. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to analyze, you know, to figure out what's right and wrong. But there's this there's this demonization that will that will occur with people having big opinions on past decisions. I know I'm guilty of it sometimes as well, but it's like, you know. Now the military is thinking about that yeah. in the present because they're thinking, oh, my God, how are people going to litigate this two months from now or two years from now or 20 years from now? Because it's easy to just be able to be mad that like war happened or whatever, you know, catastrophe happened and then find someone to blame yeah. afterwards. And I think we've seen that, unfortunately, with the the war on terror period with Afghanistan and Iraq like I love how you put it earlier as a veteran I I always make sure I say this with the guys I've in here it's like the politicians and the people back home are the ones who tell you to go there it's not your fault for going there right you have a job to do yeah. when you go there so I I don't ever think we should litigate that but people will go literally litigate like the job that like veterans did you've seen it with the Eddie Gallagher case yeah. you even saw it with a case that Sean changed my mind on the Blackwater case like I followed that in the media I thought those guys were guilty as fuck you look at the actual case I don't think they were I think yeah. they were in a really tough spot and they yeah. got hung out to dry yeah. and it's like what is that doing to incentivize the younger generations of kids who see stuff like this and go well shit I don't want to yeah. You know, I don't want to get involved with that. Yeah, and and so to me I would say not an easy fix, but a simple fix is is look at the at the blame game. Is it, you know, if you if you really want to fix that problem, stop blaming the soldiers and blame the fucking people that sent them there. You know, because I'll tell you right now, if you started threatening fucking the, the people who decide that hey, we're going to go, we're going to send these guys to war and then they do a bunch of crazy shit and say, "Okay, just like the this case in in Michigan, fairly recently where the the school shooters parents got arrested. Yeah. You know, like that's going to make you pay, that's going to make every fucking parent in the country pay way closer attention to what their kids are doing, who yeah. they're talking to online, all that shit. You start throwing congressmen in jail for sending us to a war where bad shit happened. I bet they're going to be way less fucking likely to send us there, you know? I mean, so to me, it, at least start with the root of the problem, which is don't send us there if you don't want horrible shit to do. What is the military's fucking primary purpose? It's to fuck shit up, period. Like, it's, it's not the Red Cross. It's not the fucking Humane Society. Like, it, it, it's not anything. It's not Mother Teresa. That, like, it's not a, a mission, you know, from a missionary standpoint. Like, the, our job is to go over and neutralize this country's threats. Yep. That's, that's really it, you know. So if you don't want us to do that, just don't fucking send us there. <laughs> That's a, that's a clean way of putting it. This was, this this part of the conversation was really good. I, I like this. You're it's time to piss. Is that stuff. what you're saying? Actually, yeah, I can go. <laughs> if you got to go right now. I mean, I can always go. Let's do it. All right. We'll be right back. But anyway, we are back. I actually just thought of something, though, in the bathroom. I forgot to ask you about a few minutes ago when you were talking about it with vis-a-vis China. But like, I've had conversations with a bunch of people on this podcast about different potential weapon threats and things like that. And- Without a doubt, one of the scariest ones I ever studied 
was in a book called Sandworm with a guy who's now a friend of mine, Andy Greenberg, who's been on the show. I had, I was reading that book like four or five years ago, and he talked about how there was a, a basically a test run done in Russia or in Ukraine by Russia back in 2014 and 2015 in that area of shutting down the power grid mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Now, he's writing about this before the Ukraine war and all that. But when I read about the technological capabilities of this and basically how Russia, for example, is one country was showing, oh, we can do this. No problem. That got me real scared because, you know, I start doing math. You shut down you're able to shut down two thirds of the power grid in the United States of America for like two weeks. Like the number of people dying is an insane number. And it's, I mean, it's a, it's a nuclear type event. Right. And so I know like I've talked with Sean about this on the podcast as well. He has a lot of thoughts on the power grid and a big fear of him is China with those abilities. Cause it's like, well, if Russia has it, of course, China has it. My whole thing is I don't want to be complacent in thinking of this, but like, they haven't done any of that stuff. As far as I know, they haven't attempted to do it. Maybe intelligence knows something I don't. Is part of it because like these countries know if they did something like that, we're going to do it 10 times as worse to them with our capabilities? Can I answer your question with a question? Yeah. What about holding your dick made you think of sandworm? <laughs> uh, I, I, I gotta fuck with you. If, you if you're thinking about it in the bathroom i gotta know where the inspiration came I, from I, I was just thinking about the yeah. name of the book when yeah. i was doing that little yeah. diatribe I right mean, there but yeah. uh, touche yeah well so there's there's actually two two things i think number one yes i share your concern with their ability to to completely fucking neutralize our power grid i think it speaks to the archaic nature with which our power grid still exists uh, on um, and, I, and I would say that there is a, a thing to them not doing it. I, I tend to lean more towards it's a it's more of a selfish reason reason financially is is that if you think about the amount of of economic infrastructure that exists in China and, and how greatly they are benefiting from us using Amazon and, and so many manufacturers using them is that if they do that you know, it's, it's kind of like a drug dealer spiking all of your customers, you know I mean? It, like there's, there's a, a point of that, which they, they're going to fucking their, their economy would collapse if ours did, you know? So to them, there's a huge financial incentive not to do it. Not even, I, I think arrogance wise, they're probably more of the train of thought of like, we could fucking destroy you and you, and you couldn't destroy us back if we wanted to, because they're pretty, a pretty confident, arrogant fucking country. But I think, skin in the game financially plays a much bigger role for them as to why they're not doing anything like that. I would, I would say that that's the, the, them attacking the power grid is, is tied in terms of things that I, I would be concerned with. The other thing is Russia and Putin's like special, um, pet project of the Poseidon missiles. I don't know if you've heard of them or not. Uh, they're, they're basically nuke powered miniature submarines. And there's from what I've heard, roughly 25 of them, and, you know, so because they're on nuke power and they're unmanned, uh, they have a nuclear warhead on them and they can travel like up to like fucking 90 or 100 knots, like way faster than we can do anything about. They can just circumnavigate the globe indefinitely because they're encapsulated, self-contained nuke power. And they're basically, he can just say, hit the eastern seaboard and one of them at 100 knots an hour will fucking just go, go demolish right where we're at. And there's 25 of them, you know, so to me, because, Just floating out there. yeah, th you know, again, s somebody I'm sure will skewer my, my stats on how many there are, what their capabilities are, but it's something to that, that effect. And, uh, so to me, that's equally as terrifying because I think number one, he has way less to lose economically by yeah. us be being fucked. Cause we don't depend, like he doesn't depend on us and vice versa. Um, and I think he's way more of a fucking loose cannon. You can tell by the political opponents that he's whacked and, you know, and doesn't even try to hide it. You know, the journalists that he fucking either makes disappear or, mm -hmm. uh, or poisons or throws in jail or whatever. Uh, so I, th I think he's, he's a little crazier than Xi Jinping is. And so, um, to me th those are, are pretty equally terrifying as far as existential American threats. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that economic logic though on the u.s that now that you say it it seems very obvious but that's interesting do you think that that also prevents 
at least for the time being, any other type of action from China until yeah. they figure out a way to be self-contained, which I know, do. they're not doing a great job of being self-contained economically. Yeah, no, I, I think that's the biggest driving force and, and it's going to continue. It's going to continue to, I would say, dictate, not even influence, dictate their decision to not do things beyond a certain level uh, in fucking with us. I think that, you know, the hacking of airports, the hacking of, yeah. you know, regional water and power grids and, you know, throwing the balloons like they're always testing the water. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.